Right, good morning and again a special welcome. I know we are in your living room uh, this morning and so it really is such a privilege for us to do that and to use technology to still stay connected, uh, to encourage one another, to strengthen one another and we are praying for you in this season. Um, I, I want to share a, a message that uh, I just felt God speak to me in this time and I think it's so important that we understand that, that all across the world God is doing the ultimate upgrade. Uh, the upgrade in our own personal lives, the upgrade in our gathering as community together, our upgrade in just the purposes and plans of God. And I was thinking about this uh, just this week because I don't know about you, but for a while my computer, and I'm not a technology whiz, but has been telling me it's time to update, it's time to upgrade. Uh, and because it hasn't come at an, a convenient time, I press the remind me later button um, all the time. Uh, I know that all the techie guys are going to curse me for that and say, ah, oh, you shouldn't do that. Uh, but it's just been inconvenient. It's not been the right time. And so the, because of that, my computer has begun to slow down, which I can understand now is part of the reason of um, why we do upgrades and updates is so we can become more efficient, so our, our processing can become more effective, our, our fruit. And so um, I've just been thinking about that because because... I do believe we're in the greatest season of updating and upgrading. I feel like the wine skin that God is wanting to birth inside of us is in the process of a massive upgrade uh, because the wine skin, the purpose of the wine skin is to carry the wine. It's to carry the, the, the presence of God, the, the life of God. Uh, and in order for us to get to the place where we are effective in carrying the life of God into the world around us, uh, we sometimes have to go through those updating processes. Like our PCs, we've got to press the upgrade uh, space and give space for that upgrade to happen. I think one of the reasons I kept saying remind me later was because I didn't have the space uh, to allow that computer not to be used. And I feel like God is, is literally pressing halt on a lot of our lives because He's in the, in the process of an upgrade. He's bringing us into a place of alignment and fruitfulness that requires us to go into a Sabbath season, uh, requires us to go into a rest season because in the rest is when most of the activity of God happens. Um, as we've said often, that the kingdom does not advance by our, our, our activity or by our behavior or by our doing. Uh, the kingdom of heaven advance, advances by us hearing good news and believing it, putting full trust, full rest and, and confidence in the position that Christ has brought us into. Uh, and so we want to be those that position ourselves in rest. We want to be those that position ourselves uh, for a place of fruitfulness. And so my call to us is to see this moment, this uh, lockdown restricted moment as an opportunity for us to enter into an upgrade season, an updating moment, a time of greater fruitfulness, greater effectiveness, greater efficiencies. But it's going to take us almost stepping back from the ways we've done things for so long. And so I want to speak into that a bit today. Are you good? Are you with me? Are you ready for a Sabbath uh, season? Are you ready for a rest time? Uh, and so this message is entitled, How to Enter Rest. I think the first thing that I want to say is that rest is not a concept that is, uh, has just been developed. Rest begins at the beginning. So Genesis uh, chapter 1, uh, all the way through creation, we see that God himself rested from his work so that he can enjoy the fruit of, 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 his, of his declarations. And I think rest is one of those moments that we get to enjoy the fruit of what we've declared and created with our words. Um, so, so it's a key moment for us to step back. It's a key moment for us to, to enjoy. It's a key moment for us to celebrate. It's a key moment for us to actually look at what God has done in our lives and to actually recognize it as a moment of celebration. I think it's no coincidence that when man was created on the sixth day, the first day after that, day seven, the first thing that mankind encountered was a day of rest because God's agenda has always been that we are fruitful from rest that we we're, that we're active that we work from a place of rest we are not going to rest when our work is complete that that for mankind our first encounter is, is rest and from that place we get to rule and reign with Christ uh, and so so rest is one of those things that existed from the beginning 
And, and I do believe that in this moment, God is calling us back to that place where we find uh, confidence and trust again in the finished work of Christ so that we can encounter rest, so that we can cease from our efforts and trust in the efforts and the ability of God on our behalf. And so Joshua chapter 1 is a great example of that, uh, because the people of God had come out of a season of labor, they had come out of the desert wilderness season, uh, where like that uh, updating symbol of just going round and round and round in a circle, they had been moving like that for 40 years. Uh, and in Hebrews chapter 4, um, it actually says the core reason for that was because of their unbelief. And I want to go after that because I do believe that what stops our rest, what stops us moving into the place where we can abide in Him and bear much fruit, is that we just don't fully believe that Christ is enough. We don't fully believe that the work of, of Jesus, uh, that, that, the, that what He accomplished on the cross is enough for us to come into perfect peace with God, uh, to be perfectly loved, uh, to be perfectly accepted, to, to literally have all, all degrees of punishment and judgment satisfied, for us to be come into a place of belonging. Um, and so our unbelief is the biggest thing that stands between us and rest, and that's the thing that we want to go after today. And so we see that the, the new generation of, of um, the second generation of, of believers emerged in the time of Joshua. Uh, and, and, and God was so kind to them um, because as Joshua went about the camp in, in Joshua chapter 1 verse 11, he says, Pass through the camp and command the people saying, Prepare provisions for yourself, for within three days we will cross over. And, and I do believe that uh, the vision of rest, the vision of God's promises in our life, God has made provisions for us to enter into that vision. The word pro means in advance, beforehand, together with. And so every vision that God gives us, every invitation He gives us, come to me and find rest for yourselves. Uh, take upon me, uh, let me take upon the yoke of your, of your slavery. Let, let the burden be on me. All of those promises, those visions that God has set before us have come with a provision, have come with something happening beforehand. Uh, and so I, I want to go through some of those provisions because I do believe that they're there to encourage us to stand in this time and enter into rest. And so let's look just beforehand in Joshua chapter 1 uh, and see some of the provisions that God has given His people as He spoke uh, promises over them, as He spoke truths over them, so that they could be ready for this crossing over moment, this moving into a place of rest. The first thing we see here is that God gives them the vision and the promise that no one will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. So this was his prophetic promise. This was his declaration. This was his vision over the people of God as they were crossing into this place of rest, into the place of, of, of their promises being fulfilled. That's the, the place of rest. Um, and so we have to understand it and we have to guard our minds uh, against the lies that says somehow the enemy is, um, is able to stand up against God. Uh, we know and we sing the song that in Christ, Christ has no rival. Uh, and I, I want to declare that over us, that there is no opposition that can stand against Jesus and the work of Christ in our lives. The Bible says no weapon formed against us will prosper. And, and I do believe that we've got to root ourselves. One of the provisions that God has given us for the vision of rest and performance is that we root ourselves in the promise that every single bit of opposition cannot stand against Jesus. Uh, the Bible says in John chapter 16, verse 33, In the world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer, because I, Jesus, have overcome the world. That is the, the, the position that we stand in right now, that Jesus has overcome the world and nothing will be able to stand against us. The, the work of Christ in our lives, nothing can stand against us. That's worth celebrating. The second thing we see here is that God promises, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, if you do a study quickly on every single time fear is mentioned in the Bible, there's 365 accounts of fear. That's a lot of fear happening across the world. And right now in this moment, uh, fear may be knocking on your door, but God's remedy to fear was always the assurance that He would be with us. All the way through Scripture, we see God say, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. And I do believe right now God is setting us up for the most incredible encounters with the presence of God, with God with us, with Emmanuel. Uh, this is the moment that we understand the abiding presence of God. And I want to read a promise over us uh, from Psalm 91 that says this, 
Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. That speaks of the intimacy of God. That speaks of, uh, of, of us coming into a place where we abide under the shadow of his wing. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I want to say that again. I will be with him in trouble. This is the covenant of God. This is the promise of God. Whether you feel like it or not, God is with you in the midst of this troubled time. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is the time that God is calling us uh, to see his power at work, to see the miracles of God unfold. Uh, and the promise is that God will not leave us nor forsake us. So the second provision is God's presence is always with us. We have to understand uh, that, that as we get ourselves ready to move into rest, we've got to believe that God is with us in every part of our day-to-day -day life and every part of our, our journey. And the last provision that God makes in this scripture uh, as he goes, as Joshua goes around saying, guys, get your provisions ready, is this. He says, I have given you my word. Meditate on it day and night. Then you will prosper and you will have good success. You see, one of the, the, the key um, weapons that God has given us in this season of entering the rest of God, of moving into a place where we destroy unbelief in our lives and, 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 and cross over into the most fruitful and abundant place that I believe God um, uh, has, ha, is wanting to release upon us, is we have to understand that we need to be meditating, which means to mutter, to mull over, to speak of, to actually sing. Uh, we have to be speaking and declaring and, con and letting our minds be consumed day and night with the Word of God. Um, I, I, I want to encourage us to set up a routine and a, and, a, and a rhythm around getting the Word of God inside of us, getting the Word of God inside of our families, inside of our hearts. That means to ponder, to meditate, to mutter, to speak about it in our sitting down and our coming together and our lying down and our walking around and uh, to, to, to tie that Word you know, just around our hearts. This is the moment because... The key for, for Joshua and the people of God to enter into this rest was and to walk into that place of prosperous uh, and good success was to not let this word depart from their mouths. Uh, and so I want to encourage us that in the provision of God, He's given us a weapon called the Word of God that we need to be meditating upon, thinking upon more than we think upon the, the, the world around us, our circumstances, the lies of the enemy. We need to think upon the Word of God. We need to mutter it. We need to sing it out. Uh, we need to gather with our families around it. And in that space, God promises good success and that we would prosper. Those three provisions are key for us if we're going to walk into the place of rest that God has called us to. Number one, there's no opposition that can stand up against Jesus. Number two, God will never leave nor forsake us. The abiding presence of God is with us. Whether you feel it, whether you, uh, whether you experience it in your whatever realm, uh, we are those that believe in Psalm 91 that He is literally uh, going to cause deliverance to come upon us. He's going he's to bring us out of that place of trouble because of the abiding presence in our lives. And lastly, He's given us a weapon for the Word of God to declare, to speak out, and to, uh, as the Scripture ends, be strong and courageous because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God's abiding presence is with us as we journey into rest so now that we have our provisions ready and we're ready to cross into this place of rest um, I, I want to give us a definition my definition of rest and I want to I've just uh, the, I've just put a, an acronym together uh, for rest and, and four things that are, are helpful for us to be able to enter this place um, my definition of rest is this rest is a position of trust that produces belonging, acceptance, and self-worth. Uh, I, I really feel in this time that, um, that one of the key things that God is doing is, is, you see, rest is not an external thing. It's an internal state of our soul. It's an internal state of our heart. Uh, and if we can come into a full agreement and full trust in the finished work of Jesus, the result will be that belonging, acceptance and self-worth will be evident in our lives belonging we will know that we have a place that we are needed that we belong to the family of god that we are sons and daughters of god acceptance 
We will know that we are unconditionally loved. We will know that、um, in the heart of God, that there is no place that we can be pushed aside. There's no place that we can be rejected. There's no place that we can be punished because Jesus Himself has satisfied all the requirements for us to come into perfect unity, oneness with God. And lastly, self-worth that we are valuable. Uh, that God looks upon us and sees success over our lives because of our position in Christ. That's why when Jesus was about to start his ministry, the words that God proclaimed over him were the words that God intended to bring him into rest, and they were this: "This is my Son, belonging, whom I love, full acceptance, unconditional acceptance,、uh, and in whom I am well pleased."、Uh, that is the 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 the. Kind of the call to self-worth, to value, irrespective of what we do, and so we need to hear those words higher than we're hearing the words of our negative past experience. And so one of the one of the things that we that we we're going after in this season is to allow rest to bring us into the place where we're no longer doubting that we are belong that we belong. We're no longer doubting that we are fully loved and we are fully approved by God. We're no longer doubting that we are successful in Him. We are valuable in Him, because. If we are in that position, unbelief can't attach itself、uh, to us, and so the gospel produces fruits when we attach faith to it, and that's what I want to I want to look at today. So one of the second things that Joshua proclaimed over God's people was that、um, that 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 God was going to bring them into a place where they were occupying the promised land, but first of all, He was going to bring them into a place of rest.、Uh, the Bible says this. In Joshua chapter one verse thirteen, the Lord your God is giving you rest and is giving you this land to occupy. And so we see that rest comes before occupying land. Rest comes before、uh, us experiencing the fullness of our promises. And, and so rest is quite a, a key thing in Scripture for us to actually enter into、uh, the full promise of God. So what can we do to enter this rest? Well. If we take rest and look at it as, as an acronym, the first R、uh, I, I want to first thing I want to say over us is that we need to resist resist the shame spiral.、Um, I think if if you look at Hebrews chapter four,、uh, you'll see that that the people of God got stuck in the wilderness、uh, not because of any other reason than they didn't believe what God said over their lives. When the spies were sent out in Numbers chapter 13 to go and bring back a report to God's people about what they saw in the Promised Land and what they experienced, we see out of the twelve, ten of them came back with a bad report. Came back with、uh, with an example of what it looks like to be an unbelief, where we exalt the problems and we exalt all the、uh, the negatives,、uh, and and instead of looking through the lens of God's word and God's trustworthiness in the process here. And so what happened was that they began to spread a negative reports, and because of that, the Bible says that that、um, because they felt like grasshoppers in their own eyes, so they were in the enemy's eyes, so they were in the giant's eyes.、Uh, and I think that's the biggest thing. The shame spiral is that perception of ourselves. That is negative. That perception of ourselves that is limited, where we feel like I'm just not enough. I'm a grasshopper compared to the giants around me. I'm a grasshopper compared to the world around me. I'm small and insignificant and unworthy and not good enough in comparison to to what God is calling me to. And because of that,、uh, they pulled back from faith. They could not add faith to what God was saying. They could not believe in what God was saying because of their smallness, because of their shame. And、uh, there's been many times in my life that I've been caught in the shame cycle, the shame spiral, where instead of looking at the fruit of what God has done in Christ, looking at the finished work of Jesus, looking at the fullness of who I am in Christ, my new nature in Christ,、uh, I begin to to fix my eyes on the areas that are. Are full of shame. The areas where I feel like I'm just a mistake, where I can't do something, where I don't have what it takes, and because of that, unbelief begins to take root in my life. I think one of the the key things we have to understand in entering rest is we have to resist the shame cycle. Every single time the enemy speaks into our life, the goal is for, is is through that lie is to activate shame, where we pull back from believing that we are who Christ says we are. We pull back from believing we are more than conquerors. We pull back from confidence in God. And so I want to I want to encourage us to understand,、uh, just like we see in the story of the prodigal son. Uh, the son that had come back, he was full of shame. He was he was 
Uh, he had made so many mistakes. He was looking through his past experience lens saying, I just don't have what it takes to be a son in this house. Make me one of the hired servants. And you see, the only way to deal with shame is not to try and, uh, and, 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 and will ourselves into a place of shame. The only way, into, sorry, a place of freedom. The only way to deal with shame is to encounter that father the Father in heaven, our dad, the, the God of love, who comes towards us in the midst of those moments and chooses to put a robe on us, chooses to put a ring on our finger and sandals on our shoes and chooses to, 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 to silence all the voices of accusation, just like the community in that moment would have come out to shame, name and shame him. The Father ran ahead of that. And what did he do? In that moment of intimacy, he kissed the Son and he reinstated him to a place of full sonship. And that's the moment God is setting us up for in this season. If we're going to resist the same cycle, if we're going to come into a place where rest is no longer, uh, where rest is, 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 is part of who we are, we have to give space for God to love us. We have to give space for God to encounter us with His love. The next, the next point I want to make is, is, is E. E stands for encourage yourself. If we're going to come into a place of rest, we are going to have to become diligent in encouraging ourselves all the time. The Bible says we edify our spirit by speaking in tongues. I want to encourage us to do that as much as possible, uh, to spend loads of time in worship and in praise and just declaring the goodness of God and then spending time in, in praying in the spirit, using our heavenly language to edify our spirit man. The other thing that Paul commanded Timothy to do was he said this in 1 Timothy 1 verse 18. He says, I am giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, so that by recalling them, you may fight the battle well. In this journey of, 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 of laboring to enter God's rest, of, of literally fighting the battle to try and keep busy and keep uh, disconnected and hide away, we have to we have to fight according to the prophetic words over our lives. We've got to recall the prophecies over our lives. And as we recall those things and we speak them into being and we declare them over ourselves and we encourage ourselves with those prophecies, that's a good way to fight the battles within us. And so I want to encourage you, dust off those prophetic words, re-listen to them, re-read them and encourage yourself. The next point is simplify. S standing for simplify. Uh, I really feel like God in this moment is calling us to simplify our lives. He's calling us to cut out all the excesses and to really focus on what's important, what is, what's going to be helpful for my edification and for my family's uh, well-being and health. And, and I want to encourage you to, to simplify the, the feeds into your life. You know, the Bible says to set your hearts and set your mind on things above. Uh, one of the areas that we can do that is, sim is to simplify the media feeds into our lives. Simplify the voices into our lives. Simplify the connections that, uh, that are, are obviously coming into the space of our hearts and the space of our minds and our souls. And so that may mean we have to cut off certain feeds on social media. That may mean we have to cut off certain thought patterns and make them obedient to Christ. That may mean we have to cut off uh, certain influences just so that we can simplify and we can feed and feast off the goodness of God in this season. And the fourth point I want to make is T for talk. Uh, I think one of the, the key things that, um, that we do, that God's called us to do in rest, is to process some of those emotions that are deep down, uh, that have been pushed down and just suppressed for so long. Just like with rebooting or upgrading a computer, they remind me later uh, moments where we press the button and say, well, I'm not going to deal with that now uh, because, uh, you know, I'll have time down the line to do that. You see, suppressed emotion is probably one of the biggest things that causes anxiety and fear. Suppressed emotion is the biggest thing that causes us to cut off from society and to, and to want to disconnect and, to, and causes the most amount of pain. And so one of the things I want to encourage you to do in this season is to find healthy ways to talk. Talk to your loved ones, talk to friends, talk to your pastors, talk to those who are mentoring you and process some of those emotions. You see, when you name an emotion and you speak about it, it actually disappears from the internal world of our souls. And so I want to encourage you, spend time talking about what you feel. Some questions you may ask is, uh, what, what feelings are, are dominating my soul right now? And what thoughts, what beliefs are those feelings connected to? 
if I can talk about those thoughts, if I can talk about those beliefs, those lies, if I can talk about those circumstances that literally are causing negative emotions inside of me, guess what begins to happen? I come into a greater level of rest. And so I want to encourage you to do that. God has called us to enter into rest in this season. And so I want to encourage you to find rhythms where you can feast and, and simplify the inputs in your life, where you can feast on the goodness of God. I want to encourage you to feast and encourage yourself in the Spirit by praying in tongues and by fighting according to the prophetic words of your life. I want to encourage you to stop the shame cycle where the enemy wants to tag you with all sorts of shame words like you're not enough, uh, you, you made too many mistakes, God doesn't love you, this can't happen in your life. Turning that off and understanding the reality of, of, of the Father heart of God that we see in Christ, that He's running towards you, not to expose you, not to punish you, not to reject you, but to make you belong, bring you into full acceptance, and to bring you into a place of healthy self-worth. Because in this moment, as we enter the rest of God, that's the place where we find greater fruitfulness. And so I encourage you, I, 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 I pray for you, and, and I, I ask you to strengthen yourself in the Lord as you find rest in this season.